to For Real. Thanks so much for contributing to our charity work by watching this video. It also really helps if you give it a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Details of the funds we have donated are in the description, as are the links to all of the stories mentioned in today's news moto. Today's ride has been provided to us by the Heartprint team. They're a charity based in Siem Reap, building houses and toilets and providing clean water for very poor families. Today is Wednesday the 8th of June, and in today's news we have an announcement about links between KEP and Fukuok, a new tax on tobacco, progress on the new food laws, and a cock ring is broken. But first, it looks like we're replacing the COVID update section with a monkeypox update each week. Cambodia has detected six more suspected cases of monkeypox at hospitals in the provinces, according to the Communicable Disease Control Department. The department did not specify the age of the six patients or which province they were from, but only that they were locals, not foreign nationals. After further testing, it turned out that they had another illness, one with the same symptoms. Authorities continue to track cases. This comes after Thailand reported a case of a monkeypox patient arriving in Australia after passing through Thailand recently. 30 non-endemic countries have reported more than 550 confirmed cases of monkeypox, the head of the World Health Organization said. Investigations are ongoing, but the sudden appearance of monkeypox in many countries at the same time suggests that there may have been undetected transmission for some time. With most reported cases having been among sexual encounters between men, those communities are working to inform their members of the risks and preventative action that can be taken. As always, wash your hands and take care. If you like the cancer sticks, or ciggies as we call them in Australia, then you may have to pay more for them shortly. Also, the Ministry of Education recently ordered a ban on tobacco advertising at educational institutions. I'm hoping there wasn't any such advertising at primary schools or kindies, but this remains unclear. A 64-year-old juice vendor said, I support the government and education ministry for stopping cigarette companies from promoting their products inside schools. Smoking affects lungs and memory power. I want to see a law that prohibits tobacco use. A price hike will deter students from buying tobacco products, she said. Now it's time for a did you know. Did you know there is an Angkor Botanical Garden? It's located just north of Siem Reap Town, on the road to Angkor Wat, and it's managed by the Apsara Authority. Officials of the Apsara Authority have warned that there is now a fine of 400,000 reals or nearly $100 for both national and international tourists who do not follow the instructions or violate any of the six prohibitions in the garden. So what are these six transgressions, you might wonder? Let's explore them. Number one, it is forbidden to bring pure water into the garden. We never realised that this was a problem. It is also forbidden to bring food packed in plastic. This would be a great Cambodia-wide rule, I think. Thirdly, it is forbidden to bring firearms into the garden. Best to leave your guns in your moto. You may not bring any animal into the garden, so there's no dog walking in this park. You may not defecate or urinate outside of the toilets in the garden. Again, this should be Cambodia-wide. Public urination is a national pastime for many men in Cambodia, and it would be great if they just stopped. It is forbidden, finally, to commit any illegal act. Strange they included this one as it's already illegal. Another interesting consideration is that bringing food packed in plastic or taking drinking water warrants the same fine as committing an illegal act, bringing in firearms, or defecating outside of the toilets. But this is Cambodia. We think all of these efforts are just Cambodia trying to keep you safe, whether it's from monkeypox, lung cancer, or stepping in poop while being shot at the temples. Now they are drafting laws on food safety as well. Basically, the draft law, seven years in the making, encompasses anything and everything related to food that can affect people's health. It now awaits King Norodom Siamoni's endorsement to be enacted. The draft provides for stern action to be taken over hygiene, expired products, substandard or fake goods, and improper labelling. To ensure professionalism in food delivery, if they wish to avoid the hefty penalties provided for offences, food vendors, eatery operators, restaurant owners and food manufacturers must pull their socks up. We're unsure though if wearing socks is one of the new laws. In Article 34, a fine of between $250 and $2,000 can be imposed on food business operators who run a food business, among others, without a permit, 
unhygienically or not wearing socks. Sorry, as you can see, Jeremy has helped with writing the script today. Second-time offenders will have to pay double the previous fine and their socks will be taken and burnt. For false advertising, operators can be fined between $1,250 and $2,500 and jail terms will be included for third-time offenders and also they will be banned from wearing socks or sock-like articles for the rest of their lives. Some welcome travel news now. The government will establish a water link between KEP and Vietnam's Phu Quoc Island to develop the tourism sector in that area, with speedboats providing transport between the two places. There are several tourist spots and many other potential tourist attractions, including islands, waterfalls, a forest area, mountains, zoos, and excellent infrastructure. To add to this, the province also has delicious food, convenient transport, and abundant accommodation, all of which are very inexpensive. From oceans to canals, though, as you have seen in previous news motos and in other videos that we've made, some of the canals in Cambodia are monkeypox breeding grounds and need to be cleaned. Residents of Mianche District appealed to the authorities yesterday to take immediate measures to solve sewer flooding along Stung Mianche and Bong Tompun canals. One local resident said, Two months ago, a team from the District and Ministry of Public Works and Transport came down to clean the canal, but I noticed that the canal site was still full of mud and garbage. Another resident said his house gets flooded even during light showers. The reason, according to him, is irresponsible garbage dumping in areas near the sewers. This leads us directly to the new story as multiple vehicles crash into a canal. It's worth looking at the photos for this one. Reports are muddy at best, but it does appear that a speeding tile truck hit another truck with the ensuing collision and meshing a moto sugarcane cellar in its grasp. All the involved vehicles ended up in a local canal. Some are saying the whole thing was just a shit show. After the incident, local authorities arrived at the scene to try and clear up the mess, but it may take a few years. In Crime Watch, in a move that disrespected Cambodia's state religion, a man was pretending to be a monk and fooled some Batambong residents. Authorities arrested and questioned the man, causing him to admit that he had in fact been masquerading as a monk. It turns out he stole an orange robe from a pagoda. I think the Ministry of Cults and Religions need to look into this. In more monk-related news, though, two drunks were arrested for chasing, throwing bricks and beating trainee monks yesterday. How awful. Immediately, the police arrived at the scene and arrested the two young suspects. It appears that the subject of their ire was young monks and their students who were making a flower garden in the pagoda. Very strange indeed. Now we're moving on to the cock ring story. A major, well, some would call it a small cock ring, has been dismantled. Two roosters were saved from their brutal demise in the cockfighting arenas after a raid on a cashew plantation. The confiscated evidence included five motorcycles, two roosters and some other materials. P.S. No cocks were injured in the raid. Three foreign nationals, you know what that means, were jailed over drugs and shooting police. Phnom Penh's municipal court sentenced two Chinese men to 25 years in prison over drug trafficking and attempted murder in the capital. The court also jailed another, accused Chinese man for two years and fined him $500. During a raid on the rented condominium, the accused fired shots at the police, but no one was injured. Other Chinese suspects who remain at large managed to flee from the condominium. Finally, some good news on the COVID situation in Cambodia. Cambodia has officially become a state of COVID zero after the last patient recovered, according to a health ministry statement. The country reported no new cases of COVID-19 for 31 days straight, so a solid month. This is what was reported. Of course, it's very likely that there are still cases in Cambodia. That brings us to the end of this week's news. You're now up to date with all of the most important events in the kingdom. Thank you for watching. As always, links to the stories mentioned will be in the description of the video, and we'd like to thank Heartprint again for providing today's ride. Take care, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon.